welcome to Forbidden Planet TV and welcome to FPTV new releases. Here today with our mighty book buyer, Laura Dodd, and we're very pleased to be joined by Mr. Garth Nix, live from Australia. How are you, mate? I'm very good, and it's great to be here virtually. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's all about the virtual these days. and uh, It is, it is. Th thanks so much for taking the time out at the end of your day to uh, have a chat with us, mate. Yeah, no, no, an absolute pleasure. I, it's a pity I got the time slightly wrong, but, you know, classic time difference miscalculation, but I'm here now. That's the well, moment. In, in, the, in this new world of Zoom interviews and Zoom conversations, you know, that's a, there's always a risk, you know, kind yeah, of like it is. getting the international yeah. lines connected. Um, double double checking is a good is a good idea, which I didn't do this time, and I should have. I apologise. I, I, I've I've fallen victim to that many times myself. So don't worry at all. Well, we're all here now. I'm looking forward to this chat very much. Um, I, Laura, I know you're a massive fan of God's work. I am. Yes. Thank I'm, you, I'm Laura. not going to. I'm not. I'm going to make this very very easy and very hopefully very fun for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, so Garth, what can you tell us about your new book, The Left Handed Booksellers of London? Well, I think the tagline on the cover kind of sums it all up in one short sentence, which is authorised to kill and sell books. And uh, it's, it's, like not often that, yeah. Yeah, it's not often that catchphrases, <laughs> uh, you know, really do capture the book. Um, it's the story of a young woman, Susan. It's actually it's set in an alternate 1983 in London and, and elsewhere in, in Britain. Um, it's an alternate 1983 it has some key changes to its history because I wanted to make that 1983 to be a more equitable society and uh, have have better uh, better diversity and uh, and so on. I think why not? I can make it any 1983 I want. So it's an alternate 1983, and the story is about a young woman, Susan, who goes to London to try and find her father, who she's never known, and her mother is very vague possibly affected by drugs in the 60s, but, but can't talk about him. But she has a few clues and Susan decides to follow them up. And she's almost immediately drawn into the company of the left-handed booksellers and the right-handed booksellers who are a secret society of booksellers whose job it is to uh, keep order amongst the ancient myths and legends that rise up in Britain. And uh, they also sell books. So they do, they do run two bookshops as well. But their, their main task is, is to uh, keep the old world from erupting into the new world. And Susan meets Merlin, a young left-handed bookseller. The left-handed ones are the field agents who go out and do all the fighting and so on. The right-handed booksellers are the intellectual ones, the controllers and researchers back in the bookshops. Um, the bookshops, of course, don't just have books to sell. They have all kinds of other things going on secretly as well. Um, and Susan... Uh, meets Merlin. Merlin is has a quest of his own, I guess, where he's trying to work out what happened. His mother was murdered. He's trying to figure out what happened with that. It seems to have been gang-related and be perfectly ordinary, uh, but perhaps it isn't. And then maybe their two quests actually intertwine and uh, they're drawn into this conflict between uh, ancient entities and, uh, and, and, and the mod in the modern world. So that's basically it. That's the story. It's, an, it's, a, it's a fantasy thriller. It's in an alternate 1983 England. Um, and I hope it's lots of fun. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure it will be. We can't wait. And, uh, and one of the things we're going to have at Forbidden Planet, and you will be able to pre-order in the links attached to this video, is a uh, special book plate edition. That's right, Laura, isn't it? Yeah. It yes. certainly is. Yeah, we've got our own <laughs> special book plate edition. And we will also um, have some of the uh, special badges that Garth has designed to accompany the release of the book. And, well, um, designed designed by a very talented American artist called Josh Wong, but commissioned by me. So <laughs> I, I wish I, I wish I could show them to you. I haven't they haven't actually arrived yet from the manufacturer, so I, I can't I can't show you an actual badge as yet. I wish I could, uh, but there are there are images of them uh, I put up on my Facebook and so on. What was the genesis of that? What, what, what made you think of putting the badge together? Uh, I just li I, I like objects uh, from my books. Um, I like to create or to have created things that tie into the books. Um, like for the Old Kingdom books, um, I had a, a silversmith make um, bell charms for the seven bells that are used in the Old Kingdom books. 
uh, they are very much a collector's item because unfortunately uh, there was one big run of them, but I haven't been able to, to get more made for some time, but maybe one day, uh, I hope we'll come back to that. And yeah, I, I like objects. I'm very fascinated by uh, small details, I guess, and small objects in my own books. And I like to try and make them real. And of course, something like a, a pin that represents the, the bookseller's official badge, their police badge, as it were, um, is something that I could actually make real. Um, I couldn't make a lot of the other stuff real, but uh, I, could, I, could, I could make those happen. So yeah, I just, I just love that kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah, and no, no, it's, it's it's really lovely to to savour it. Um, yeah, I mean, I th I th and I think anything that adds value like that, you know, to to your sensory experience when you're you're reading the book, and yeah, you, it adds yeah. so lovely. You know, it kind of like, makes it all feel more real, doesn't it? You know, it's, it's yeah. like you yeah. you know, it's not, but it just helps you get carried away by by the story and the world. Um, yeah. So I I love all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So 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 do we, and and. One thing Laura and I were talking about before is the uh, it's Left Hand Booksellers London is such a fantastic title. Um, <laughs> where, where, where did that come from? How did you put oh. it, Laura? Was it, it are you left handed yourself, and is it an ode to the plight of left handers everywhere? <laughs> I think that's those are your it's words. Right? Exactly. Yeah, well, I may I may have been left handed. I can write with my left hand quite well, mm -hmm. um, or I, actually I could write quite well with my left hand. I, I have, um, after many, many years of typing, I have, uh, I have arthritis in both thumbs and it's much worse in my left hand. Um, so I, I find it much more difficult to write, but I've always been able to write with, with both hands. And my mother said I may have been left handed, but of course I'm old. So when I was a child, that was the era when you were forced to, to, to work with your right hand. They stopped you using your left hand. Um, so it's probably a little bit of that. Um, and one of my sons is left handed and sort of runs in, in the family but the the genesis of the title and the book i mean it it harks back to when i was a bookseller myself going back a long way and the book does draw very heavily on my uh, my book selling experiences um and also on all the many many bookshops i've visited as an author over the years but the 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 spark for the title and indeed the story was when i was in the uk on tour for my book golden hand and i was in leith the, the port city, the port mm -hmm. suburb of Edinburgh, uh, at the, uh, the the Waterstones there, Ocean Terminal, I think it is. Mm -hmm. and the bookseller who was helping with the signing, I noticed he was left-handed. I said, "Oh, you're left-handed." You know, just making conversation. He said, "Yeah, we all are. Everyone in that store was left-handed." And I said, "Oh, the left-handed booksellers of Leith." Yeah. And he went, yeah. <laughs> and I thought, I'm making a note of that. And then I made a few more notes and. Um, but I, I, I chose to move it to London rather than Leith because I, I, wanted, I needed more scope and also I know London much better. Um, and I first, I first went to London in 1983. Uh, I was 19 years old um, and I'm, that's when I've spent the most time there as well. I've been back many, many times since. And it just seemed to make sense to, 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 to put it in that time. I actually don't even know why, sort of instinct. Um, but it also let me play around with lots of fun 1980s pop culture references and, and so on, and also mix them up. So, yeah, I love the professionals, the TV show, but yeah, I gender wow. swapped it in the book, in the, in, in the book, Bodie and Doyle are women. Fantastic. Um, and, as it should and, have been. As it, well, <laughs> when I wrote that, I thought someone should remake it now. Yeah, Set it well, in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. It's the professionals, but two women in the role. Yeah. And, um, and one of the one of the one of the secondary characters um, is reminiscent of a uh, of uh, Denise Waterman rather than Dennis Waterman, you know. From this <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, so, <laughs> I think like that. so I got to I got to play with. This. And the other thing is, when I was there in 90, 1983, and I, I was I bought this beat up Austin sixteen hundred that had a gold flame stripe down the bonnet, so it went much faster. And I drove all <laughs> all around the United Kingdom. One of, the, one of the things about that trip was whenever I went out of range of a radio station, I had to tune it into another radio station. They were always playing Mike Oldfield's Moonlight Shadow. <laughs> just constantly. You know, wherever I went, I put that in the book as well when yeah. you know, the two, two of the characters, Merlin and, and Vivian, um, are driving, actually, you know, trying to catch up with Susan who's been abducted. Um, they keep hearing, you know, Moonlight Shadow is just on everywhere they go. So sort of putting some of the real 
things from that that time in as well yeah. is also something I like to do. It was fun. What I absolutely that's a fantastic story, by the way, and I have to say it's much better than the story I was expecting. It, it's beautiful. <laughs> the the left handed booksellers leap, fantastic. And uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, I know exactly the period of time that you're talking about because that year when Moonlight Shadow was a big hit, it was a similar period of time when I went on an extended um, sort of driving tour around Ireland with a bunch of my mates. And it was, it, it, you're absolutely right. Yeah. It was, yeah. a, it was about every half an hour that song was on the radio. Yeah, you know, it was all course, pervasive. It doesn't, it doesn't happen now. And, and yeah. I mean, and to be honest, I, 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 um, I like the song. I was sick of it at the time, but it, yeah. you know, it reminded me to listen to it again. I thought, yeah, it's actually, it's a, it's a good yeah. song. Um, and we had uh, several years earlier on a car trip, or many years, quite a few minute years earlier on a car trip in Australia, had a similar thing with my family where everywhere we went, it was Fernando by ABBA. Oh, yeah. We drove like a thousand miles and it was just constantly Fernando. So that, that's, that's a phenomenon that doesn't happen anymore. You, so true. You move out of range of one radio station <laughs> yeah. and just get the same song. <laughs> so true. Laura, I know you've got a bunch of questions we got. Yes, yes. So um, you seem to have like a fascination with like British legend and folklore. Did you have that from a young age or was that inspired from your kind of first visits to the UK? Oh, no, much, much earlier. It's inspired, I'm inspired by literature, basically, inspired by my reading. Um, and in fact, I think my entire career is, is down to the books I've read growing up, um, many of which I mentioned in the left-handed booksellers of London. Um, where they actually you know, refer to the dangers of those children's books uh, because of children's authors inadvertently actually telling the truth about stuff that's better, best left untold. Um, so I, I did get to put in quite a, quite a number of the books that not only personal favourites, but were enormously influential to me. Um, and they, they range from you know, Alan Garner's The Wids, the Rosingerman and, and so on, all these books. Um, Susan Cooper's The Dark Is Rising, uh, there's, there's, there's so many, in fact, you know, Joan Aiken, um, Dana Wynne-Jones, uh, all, all the classic, you know, children's authors of, of the 60s and 70s, uh, which I grew up reading. And, and partly that's a, that was a function that um, Australia was very culturally you know, dominated by British stuff mm -hmm. uh, when I was growing up. Um, that's, that's obviously changed over time. I mean, it's actually always been... I guess since World War II, a mixture of American and British, and of course our own peculiar stuff as well. Um, but but the British, I, I think, with particularly with fantasy, you know, fantasy is in a, a tradition of English literature. Um, so uh, I, I felt myself very much uh, connected to that tradition, um, even from my you know my very first writing. Uh, that that's what I wanted to do was to try and kind of reproduce the experience that I had from uh, from reading the books that I loved and I've just kept on doing it <laughs> all this time and and uh, but also not just the fiction but also uh, the myths and legends um, you know, going back to the original folk tales and fairy tales and so and I, I know I, I'm deeply fascinated by all that stuff and uh, and I love to draw on it in my in my in my own books mm -hmm. and you're, you're a huge Tolkien fan as well aren't you yeah, I am a huge Tolkien fan. It's <laughs> funny you mentioned lending a copy of Sabriel to a friend because it instantly reminded me that I very reluctantly lent my three-volume Lord of the Rings, which my parents gave me when I was 14 in hospital, to a flatmate years and years mm. and years and years ago, and he never gave them back. Yeah. No, He's don't say that. <laughs> I couldn't get the I, books I, back, I but I could that. have him kill. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> No, I know. So I should be careful. I mean, I, I shouldn't say things like that because actually I'm totally, I, lo I lost track decades ago. So if he was murdered now, they'll, they'll be like, hang on a second, we've got to look at that cold case. We finally found a motive. But uh, yeah, it's, it's never lend books that, that, that uh, you can't afford to lose. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy to lend books, but not ones that are, uh, are, are very valuable like that. So, but yes, I'm a, I'm a very big Tolkien fan. My parents read The Hobbit and then The Lord of the Rings to me when I was quite young. Um, and in fact, sometimes when people are talking about um, how old they were when they first read The Lord of the Rings, I always keep this secret trump card, which is my mother was reading The Lord of the Rings when she was pregnant with me. 
So I kind of absorbed it in mm. utero. Yeah. So I always claim, <laughs> yeah, I read it. I read it before I was even born. So I topped that one. Yeah. You know, people say I read it when I was eleven or twelve yeah. or, or whatever. Um, I'm not sure that really. Well, actually, to be honest, it doesn't work. People just go, "That's nonsense." What are you talking about? But uh, I still, I still like to try and do that yeah. one-upmanship there. I, I think as Tolkien connection goes, that's a great. That is a great one. I think mm -hmm. um, it's it's worth a try. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. It feels appropriate to me. I think it does. Yeah. 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 Um, I know that when you, uh, I think when Laura spoke to you last time around, I think one of the things that you guys were discussing was uh, adaptations of your work. Have you got any any sort of developments on that front you can talk to us about? Well, there's no really new developments. There's various things that are in development, as, as they say. Um, Frog Kisser is still uh, in development with Dis Disney. Um, it was with Fox. When Disney bought Fox, I thought, you know, it's probably the end of it. They've got a lot of princess stories and frogs, do they? And also it takes the Mickey out of some sort of stuff there. So maybe it won't work. But, um, but to their credit, uh, Disney are still working on that. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the pandemic, who knows what, what's going on with, with everything. Um, so your frog kisses in development with Disney. Uh, my Keys to the Kingdom series uh, is in development with a company called Hershen, another American uh, company. Uh, who are teaming up with an, another studio. Um, the Old Kingdom books have been backwards and forwards for years with, with different studios at different times. Uh, it was set up with Amazon three years ago and I co-wrote a pilot uh, with uh, a great screenwriter and a good friend of mine, uh, but, but they didn't pick it up. So possibly actually around the time they bought Lord of the Rings. So maybe they... <laughs> I thought, oh, we've got this big, we've got the big fantasy. We don't, you know, we don't need any other, these other little ones. Um, but there's, there's nearly always interest in it. It's just whether that gets turned into anything concrete. And of course, even when, when uh, big studios or big production companies option works, you never know what, what's going to happen, whether anything will, will come of it. But there's this sort of stuff always going on. None of it's come to fruition, but uh, who knows, you know? It's not something I can control, so <laughs> I just, uh, I make decisions about who I, who I think would be good to work with, and, yeah. uh, and obviously, who's offering lots of money as well. <laughs> um, so all, all, all these factors come into play. Um, but uh, I, I'd like to think that it's not just, I always tell myself that uh, I, I wait the, the people involved as heavily as everything else. I'm not sure that's absolutely true, but uh, but it, it it certainly is something I'm I'm very particular about. And uh, and it depends. Different books of mine, I'm I'm much more protective of, I guess, in terms of of who I I team up with and and what potentially might happen. So yes, nothing n nothing new to report. But the nature of that business is that nothing happens for ages, and then all of a sudden something happens or it doesn't, and you start all over yeah. again. Um, so that's where we're at. Yeah. yeah right well, well, good luck with that. I mean, we definitely look yeah. forward to, uh, you know, if you get some traction and you get one of those projects out, that'd be amazing. Yeah, I mean, and I've been very involved in the Old Kingdom stuff, and you know, in, in the writing side, and I certainly want to be for that. Um, Frog Kisser, I haven't been, but uh, that's fine. Uh, Keys to the Kingdom, I notionally am, but but that hasn't actually got to a point where a script's been written. So, um, yeah, I, I just hope that whatever happens, something good, something good is made. Uh, and, uh, but as I said, it's, it's, it's out of my control. So got to let it go and just move on, write new things. Yeah, right on. Uh, Laura, we've got time for one more question. And I know you, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I was going to, yeah, no. Um, so you're a huge uh, video game and tabletop gaming fan. Um, yeah. What D&D uh, &D class would you say you belong to? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what would I belong to? Well, it would have no relation to my actual life, uh, <laughs> I'm sure. I, I guess I, don't, I very rarely play D&D now, unfortunately. I um, just don't get the chance. But I tend to often gravitate to rangers. I like mm -hmm. to play a ranger, um, and I think perhaps in terms of what I'm actually like, um, I'd like to believe that I have some ranger-like characteristics, but I probably don't. 
Um, I don't spend really any time in the wild. I, I did when I was much younger. Um, so I think I'd be disqualified. I'd be kicked out of the ranges for not, not living in the woods. Um, so I'm probably more like a, a, a reclusive uh, magic user you know, these days, stuck in my <laughs> tower, developing <laughs> spells and uh, working on strange magic items. Uh, small pins that when people put them on, it makes them buy all my books, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say it's the perfect metaphor for being an author. Uh, and, it is, uh, yeah. and, and particularly your kind of author where you, you've got your you know, your interesting, you know, value added um, creations as well. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I'd like to think so anyway. Hey, Garth, uh, thank, thanks so much for, for joining us. Um, this has been Forbidden Planet TV and you have been watching Forbidden Planet's book by Laura Dodd. I'm Andrew Summer and this is the mighty Garth Nix talking about his latest release, The Left-Handed, the awesomely titled, titled <laughs> Left-Handed Booksellers of London, which I have to say, mate, you know, I mean, it's a pleasure to be able to have these conversations with authors, but every now and again, somebody talks a book that you, about a book that you really want to read, and this has been one of those moments. <laughs> so, uh, That's my cunning you, plan. Yeah, thank you for that detail. Yes. I, I Get all the booksellers wait. on board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, and you're going to be able to pre-order our book plate edition from the links attached to this video. And we will also have a limited supply of Garth's epic and awesome badges. Um, thanks for spending the time with us, mate. And we look forward to talking to you again pleasure. for a talk, FP Talks 2, where we'd like to get into a deep dive about yeah. your back catalogue at some point. Sure. No, happy. Very, very happy to do that. So, yes, a pleasure. Great to thanks talk so to you much. both. Yeah, you Thank take you. care. Thanks All the very best. Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, okay. Bye-bye. Cheers. See ya.